We are at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for round seven and eight of the 2020 FIA World Rallycross Championship, but we are already looking ahead towards next year. And this fantastic car behind me is the brand new RX2E machine, which will be one of the key support categories for the World Championship moving forward and moving towards an electric future in motorsport. It's a fantastic piece of kit, and we've got an ideal person here who can tell us a little bit more about it. Oli Eriksson, who of course is a double RX2 champion, the predecessor to this car, and also the supercar champion from Rally X Nordic this year. Ollie, good to see you. Look, it's, it's still in camouflage, it's early days. This is the launch event this weekend, but tell us a little bit more about this car. Yeah, for sure. It's still in camouflage because it's uh, not the final design of the body yet, but uh, most of the stuff under the hoods are, are getting there. Uh, we're developing as we speak. Uh, all the fine tuning is still on the car, so yeah, it's exciting. Obviously, it's electric powered. There's a motor in the front and a motor in the rear. The battery is kind of where the passenger would sit if there was a passenger. It's water cooled. So there are some things which are familiar, like the radiators in the back, like we'd expect from a rallycross car. But driving it, how, how different is it? Just the initial driving stuff. Yeah, you know, it's still, still sort of a car, you know, it has a, a steering wheel and pedals. But uh, yeah, for me, it's like getting a new smartphone, you know, it's, oh, it has these features and then it can do that. And yeah, it's a lot of new stuff to, to, to learn, but uh, it's very exciting for sure. How's the torque? Because electric motors, obviously a, a petrol engine, it develops power through the RPM, whereas with an electric motor, it's something crazy, it's like 100% torque from that. Yeah, from instant. Uh, as soon as you touch the pedal, you have all the torque in the world. And uh, yeah, it's a big, cool feature. You can adjust it uh, which axle you want it uh, the most. Uh, to yeah, adjust the behavior of the car and so on. But, uh, yeah. Now on, on the dash, I've noticed there are three different colored dials which you can adjust. And I know that one of those is what you're talking about there, which is the, which is the torque bias. So in basic terms, what, what does that mean to, for the people at home? Yes, when you go on throttle and exit of a corner, uh, you can adjust which axle you want the most power, basically. So if you want it a bit more oversteer, a bit more understeer, you as a driver can adjust it where you want it on the throttle. Okay, but also then when you come off the throttle, uh, this car regens, doesn't it? So like an F1 car can harvest uh, power, if you like, into the battery from the motors. You can do the same with the RX2e car, but you can make two adjustments on the regen, which, which make a difference to the way the car feels. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for Rallycross, we had to have the option to, to left foot brake, which is uh, kind of opposite to, to many other things, uh, like Formula E. They adjusted with the braking, but we use the regen as an engine braking instead of, of, a, of a brake helper, uh, so to speak. So you can adjust it uh, as well, where, on which axle you want the, the most regen and most engine braking, so to speak, and also how aggressive you want it. So we, we were talking earlier on Barcelona and the long tarmac left-hander, and you were yeah. saying that you would probably load the front of the car there for the regen, why? Yeah, because with the engine brake in the region, you can uh, reduce the length of the, the mid-corner braking, basically. It's so uh, effective uh, between when you start to steer until you want to go on throttle. It slows the car down a lot, which means you can push the braking zone a bit more. You can brake later and you can use that force to carry the car better. There's, there's some traditional rallycross stuff as well. We, I believe we can still launch. I've seen there's a big yep. stick handbrake in there as well, so we can still go sideways. Is, is that any different? And the launch procedure, I imagine, must be very different. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's somewhat different. Uh, you don't have a clutch to play with to, to put the preload on. It basically does it by itself. So you engage the, the launch mode, uh, you hold the handbrake, and then you, you hit the throttle and you make the car go into preload mode. And from there, you just lift off and let it go. Okay, and I guess it's rapid away from the line. Yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> okay, awesome. So, okay, we're losing the sound. You, you say it's quite noisy in the car anyway, don't you? And I, I think people will be surprised when there's a bunch of these on track that it's not quite as quiet as they think. No, uh, these cars are, we have a straight cut uh, transmission, so the transmission uh, noise and everything is much louder than a current combustion engine car. But yeah, for sure we lose the, the engine sound of things, but uh, it's a lot noisier than anyone would think, yes. All right, a lot for me to learn about it, a lot for Ollie to learn about the driving and the sounds of things, but it looks like these things are going to be a real challenge, and that's what we want for these young drivers who are coming up through the ranks. So RX2E, coming to a circuit near you in 2021.